Jimmy Jackie Revocable Trust versus Bank of America, 720-032, consolidated with 730-078. Can I get appearances, please? Good morning, Your Honor. Joseph Long for Plaintiff Jimmy Jackie Revocable Trust. Nona Tobin, pro se applicant for intervention. Bless you. So I have an applicant and intervention of Nona Tobin, trustee of the Gordon Hansen Trust, and it's a motion to intervene. But I have a trustee who is, oh, okay, I've seen your motion to intervene. I have an opposition and I have a reply. And do I have anyone here from Bank of America, Sun City Anthem? Or Sun City Anthem? Or anyone from Nation Star? No. Sure, nobody's here on any of those other for this case. Nation Star Mortgage? Anyone want to check their cell phones outside in the ante room for a moment to make sure that they're not here on this case? The reason why I'm saying that is I've got counsel here that's. Uh, Nation Star is represented by Wright Finley. Oh, it's Wright Finley? Yeah. Okay. Without me double checking everything, well, we know Wright Finley chose not to appear at my last court ordered hearing. So, anybody here on behalf of Wright Finley? No. Anyone want to pretend you're here on behalf of Wright Finley? No. Okay. So, um, Sun City Anthem Community Association, anyone? They were not served. <coughs> not served? They, are, they have not been served ever. So, they are not included in the uh, oh. e filing system. And so, my court recorder politely putting the record, recording device a little bit closer to you so she can hear you. Thank you so much. Okay, so Sun City you say is not served, so I don't have to. So I've got all parties who choose to be here. Okay. Um, go ahead. It's your motion to intervene. I got some questions, but I'd rather hear your position. I'm appreciative of the very lengthy which you submitted. Appreciative of their opposition. I'm appreciative of your reply. So go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I um, am uh, filing this motion to intervene on a quiet title case, and I am the beneficiary um, and trustee of the trust that was the owner of the um, property when there was a disputed HOA foreclosure sale. And um, I'm intervening. Um, I, I meet all the conditions of uh, Rule 24 for intervention by right. I have an interest in the property, which would be impaired if uh, these two cases go forward uh, without um, me being permitted to intervene. The other parties cannot represent my interests. Their interests are re adverse. This was timely filed, and um, I followed the procedures in uh, Rule 24, I served all of the people that were in, all of the parties that were in the WISNET e-filing system and attached affirmative defenses and a counterclaim against uh, Jimmy Jack as well as um, a cross-claim against the HOA, uh, F. Bon Durant, and Opportunity Homes. Who are the other parties who have been named but for whatever reason have not been served. Or they've served at the beginning and then not served, but they're not in the WISNET system. Uh, the opposition Mr. Hong filed was not timely according uh, to Rule 220E. Uh, 220E, yeah, I'm familiar with it, thank you. That should be uh, an opportunity for their opposition to be discounted and disregarded. In addition, on that same rule, a later section, um, the opposition was uh, just a bare bones without any legal standard or any um, actual merit. Let me hear from opposing counsel, and then the court's going to, then you get last and final word. Counsel, I mean, I, I read your opposition. I mean, just because it gives somebody another chance to do it doesn't mean that they don't have a chance to do it. I mean, I got a motion to intervene. I, I understand that, Your Honor, but remember, procedurally, 
there's one case now because of the consolidation. Mm -hmm. okay, so this case that we're here on is over a year and a half old. And right now... And how much have you done on this case, counsel? Well, no, this, is, this was the whole issue on the res judicata argument. So Appreciate at, Right, so at this juncture, it's between my client and NationStar, irrespective of the res judicata argument, as to whether my client owns the property free and clear or subject to NationStar's deed of trust. Now, in trying to decipher the proposed pleading proposed intervener intervener mm -hmm. has to understand that there there's no right of redemption here so the only way I, I, I'm not seeing what interest in the property that she can potentially claim here and as for the uh, opposition it was timely it's 10 plus 2 10 plus 3 it's it was timely filed and so that's not not an issue but Again, I think the core question is what from trying to decipher the proposed pleading, I, I just don't, but, don't see it. And, and, and I'm sure we can do motion practice after if the court grants the motion, but from the proposed pleading, there's no indication of how she can claim an interest in this property. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, you get last word, then the court makes a ruling. Okay, first on the issue of the, the case now consolidated, it's a year and a half old. Um, Mr. Hong did not record a Liz Pendens on his <coughs> original um, complaint that he filed in June of 15, so that neither Nation Star nor any other interested party was aware of it. And he, he didn't even serve the HOA, although he named them. Now, as, uh, there's um, the, in um, Shadowwood, there's a discussion that even if you are not in possession, that the court can sit in equity to um, resolve the differences. The claims that I um, make are not, um, is that, that that HOA sale was invalid. There were a number of procedural and statutory deficiencies, but they also failed to um, do the uh, proper notice of sale process through the um, ombudsman's office in the um, a, uh, division of real estate. And that uh, failure um, eliminates the uh, statute of limitations. Okay, well, what the court I mean, the court has to look at this as a standard of a motion to intervene, okay? When I look at the standard of the motion to intervene, the court's going to find it's appropriate to grant the intervention. In so doing, the court takes no position as to any of the substantives or affirmative rights or any further motion practice that may or may not become before this court. The court does evaluate whether or not you mentioned that this case is a year and a half old. Well, the reason why the court was asking the question about what's been done on it is because I didn't even see that there's a JCCR filed on this case. looks to, at least from the records... On uh, electronic records, it looks like a notice of early case conference was filed back, not by any firm that's currently present before the court. Uh, the Wright Finley firm appears to have filed a notice back in uh, June of 2016, but then I have no JCCR, which I have no JCCR. That I'm not sure if that means one was done and that there's some error, but that means you don't have a trial order. If you don't have a trial order, it's a hard chance to say that there's some prejudice to the parties to add in another party from an intervening standpoint. The standards appear to have been met. I don't have any argument that the standards have not been met other than the court should make an affirmative ruling that the case couldn't go forward. That's not the standard I have to look at in a motion to intervene as far as an interest in the property. I have to look to see on that on subsequent motion practice if it comes before the court. So the standards of a motion to intervene as liberally needs to be interpreted by this court. The court's going to grant it. I'm going to ask you to prepare an order. Now, do you, I, do you know how to prepare an order circulated to all parties, even including the party that's not here, okay? Because the only party I have in opposition, bless you, was from Jimmy Jack. So two things. One, you need to get that order filed, granting the motion to intervene. And two, you all need to make sure you get a, if you haven't done the early case conference, sure need to do it, and sure need to make sure you get a joint case conference 
report done to the extent you haven't done it. And like I said, it doesn't appear that it has been done, so we can get you a trial order and get you going forward with this case. Thank you so very much. It is so ordered, and so prepare that order as you know in accordance with 7.21. You've heard me say it a couple of times. That means 10 days. Same thing. It's the holidays. I am appreciative that many people are out of town, although everyone seems to want to be in this courtroom today, which you're more than all welcome. Um, so do you need more time than 10 days? Um, or just 10 days to prepare the order and circulate to all parties? Meaning you have to have an order that says it's granted. So the question about all parties, that means even if they're not in the WISNAP system? Well, that means everyone, you said you've signed up for electronic service, right? Yes. But you can e-serve e a draft of the proposed order and let everyone know that you're going to submit it to the court. You have to give them at least three days to respond, okay? And then say you can submit it to the court. So you can do the 10 days, or like I said, some people have been asking me in light of the holidays that they want a little bit more than the 10 days. If you're so asking, same as other people, I'll grant it to you just like I do to anybody else who's been asking. And I can, can say that instead of 10 days, you can have it done by January 6th. Does that meet your needs? Yes. Okay. Any objection, counsel, to give more oh, yeah. than the 10 days? I presume that works to everyone's advantage, right? I do appreciate it. Thank you so very much for your time. Have a great holiday. Okay. Page 12. Okay. Tobin parties were the trustee and the individual. Nona Tobin is an individual, a resident of Sun City Anthem. She's the beneficiary and the trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust, dated August 22, 08, amended August 10, 2011. The Gordon B. Hansen Trust was the title holder of the subject property at the time of the disputed HOA foreclosure sale.